Afternoon guys, right, I'm on the GoPro at the moment, um, so apologies if the audio is a bit rubbish. Um, I'm gonna plug in the external mic in a second, because we're gonna go for a little bike ride. Now it's been a little while, because this has just been such an atrocious winter, um, as it always is in the UK, and I just can't be bothered with it, to be honest. Since I've got the Twizy for kind of getting around, I'm not really bothering with riding the e-bike as a kind of commuter vehicle, it's mainly just for fun. So I think I just took it out in the snow once, um, over the over the kind of Christmas period and it was a right of blast but um, yeah we're gonna have a little bit of fun today so quick update on what's happening with the bike basically my battery is still away it's getting sorted out because there was a string of series cells that was a little bit iffy in the pack so what happened something went wrong and one of them, one bank just completely discharged so it was effectively like a, a 19s pack now i didn't bother trying to fix it myself because um insat supplied the battery so it kind of went back to them and they've just basically you know sorted it sorted everything out and it's going to be winging its way back to me uh this week i think so yeah that'd be good so for now i'm going to be using my backup packs now these are just basically if you haven't seen the other video these are just bosch um six amp power 36 volt so effectively like 10s 2p packs and what i do is i just i bung these together in a parallel a two parallel two series um kind of configuration which gives you 72 volts at 12 amp hours which is kind of enough for a little rip you know you can't really pull huge amounts of power but you know it gets it gets the bike running and then as soon as i get the other battery back we can go back to full power but right, just a quick one then this is how i've got them wired up so it's just basically like a series parallel kind of affair this amp clamp on here is, is something that i do um, just out of habit i'll put the amp clamp across any parallel connections so i can see if there's any current running between each cell when you parallel parallel them up it's a good idea to do that guys because if you've got one battery that's really charged and the other one that isn't then you're going to get a huge amount of current running across the other way you shouldn't do that anyway um, and i usually just check the voltages of each each pack anyway which I, I have done this in this case but you still get a little bit of current so it's like 100 it started off at um four or five um hundred milliamps but now it's kind of gone down uh gone down to one so now the sooner i'll get my battery back i won't need to worry about this but these, these are good packs to have around because you can just use them for a multitude of things um, and i've kept them specifically in their cases as well like the bosch um, drill batteries so I can use them in power tools um, I can charge them properly on their own chargers um, which is good and I can put them in the quad bike I can use use them for lots of different things so I have considered ripping them all apart and just you know making a, a dedicated pack with a BMS and everything else but actually this is quite good like this they're also under warranty as well right let's get the side of the bike off then right guys so here's the batteries inside they just slot in quite nicely just got this spacer here I'm actually using an adapto midi at the moment I've got my um, max e which i'm going to be putting back on when i get the bigger battery but this one's good up to eight kilowatts which is pretty good it's also just started raining as well typical isn't it right then got my lid on let's wheel this out right so i don't know if you can see this but i've got a circuit breaker in here so i've already flipped that on um, and this is the first time i would have fired up this controller for a little while so hopefully everything will be all good yep so it's coming on <coughs> uh 81 volts same 51 percent i need to reset that um so oh blimey it has been a while since i've done this reset and full charge reset and full charge that's all done cool good to go all right guys here we go then I feel a little bit rusty already actually riding on these slippery old trails it's been quite a while since i've been out on this as i say it's probably like um around christmas as we come up to the the big pond uh shall i brave it i'm gonna brave it oh my god that's not good Whoa! okay so i just completely immersed myself and probably everything <laughs> yeah that was a, that was actually a lot that was actually a lot deeper than i thought it was <laughs> my feet are soaked ah so annoying this weren't a good idea coming this way because it's absolutely soaked not off to a good start guys <laughs> I've just noticed this, um, oh no, something's putting the brakes on here. It's 
something he's not happy with that that water problem. Can't believe how much water there is down here. I should have brought the quad. This was a mistake. Keep getting this thing flying up on the screen where, it, where it's lighting all of the um, all of the temperature bars. It must be something to do with that water, but this is not good. I'm basically going to be limping back at this rate. Hopefully, I'll just get some of this water um, worn out. Just pedal a little bit. I'm not going to. Not going to give it too much beans. Still doing 20 mile an hour though. I've not seen that before. I don't know what that is. It could be. It could be the temperature sense wires for the motor that have got water um, on them, or something like that, and it's freaking the controller out. Let's see what I can do. Maybe if I, if I uh, turn the motor motor temperature sensor off, maybe that'll maybe that'll resolve it. Let's have a look. I feel like this is going to be another adapto draw into a close. Right, so that's it. The controller is set up I can't remember where it is now. Thermo sensor. Let's turn thermo sensor off. Save settings. Right, let's see what happens now. Because it was like going up. All these, if you can see this because of the camera angle, but all these were going up. They're now going off and they're now going up almost like as the wheel was going around. So anyway, let's see, see if this does anything. It's still, it's still doing it. This is really weird. I better get, um, better get closer back to home because otherwise this is gonna, this is gonna leave me stranded. I can just tell. So you basically got e-bike problems here in real, real time. Where it was on a motocross bike you probably wouldn't have too much problems you might get a bit of a stuttering motor let's come back now that problem but um yeah on an e-bike water is not good it just keeps putting the brakes on very strange problem is i don't know if this problem was to do with going through the water or um, if it's something else, because I haven't ridden this for a while, so it's hard to know. So let me get some speed out now. So smooth. Should have stuck to the roads, eh, guys? Always makes me nervous going past those things. I 
hate to say this, but I reckon water's got in there. Best option probably is to um, just dry it off, get it warmed up, stick it in the uh, in the workshop with a fan heater blowing on it. Otherwise, taking everything out, <coughs> taking the controller out, so don't really want to don't really want to have to do. This thing's still got some power though, even though it's even though it's having trouble and uh, also running on these low power batteries. The cells in these batteries, I think, are the same as what's actually in the main my big battery pack um, for this. But obviously, um, you've got less less in parallel. In effect, you've got four parallel instead of ten parallel, uh, which does make a difference. It's maybe the voltage that's held under load. Yeah, this is just, it's almost limping around. I'm not sure what to... I think lesser men would probably have gone home by now. I'm determined to see if just heating up the controller a little bit will actually um, will actually help it. It's got yeah, this is all over the place, this flipping temperature sensor. Oh, so annoying. Oh. Right guys, back on the other camera now, should be a little bit better. Um, yeah, so weird. Got the bike all dried off now. I've just put it put it in here and just you know stuck a fan heater on it, and and all of the dried mud has already started to uh, to fall off of the bottom of it. So let's just turn it on again, and um, and just see if it's doing that thing. I just have to leave this for a second to see if it see if it goes up. I don't know, guys. It doesn't seem to be doing it now. I'll probably start doing it if I took it out for a ride. But anyway, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna strip all this stuff off on the bike anyway. Take that controller out. Put the new Maxi that I've got, which is knocking around here somewhere. Um, that's the repaired Maxi that I got back from Adapto. I'm gonna stick that back on. Also, I think I'm not really liking the idea of having this controller on the outside. Um, although it does help with cooling, it's just it's just a recipe for disaster. Like if you accidentally go through some water. So I think what I'm probably going to do is move this back in here. I may grab another one of these frame sets. Um, you know, we supply these through Cloudstow if anyone's interested in buying these anyway. Short little plug. But yeah, what I'll probably do is grab another one of these because I've made a mess of it underneath with holes and all sorts. So I'm going to, you know, probably... These plastic bits actually come off. They're just stuck on. So you can actually take this top bit off um, all the way around here and it comes off there. And you can just take the whole thing off. Obviously, you've got to take the saddle off. Um, but you can replace all these panels, so it's quite good for sort of servicing. The steel frame underneath is just, yeah, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I haven't messed around with that. Um, but plastic-wise, you can you, know, you can just replace these if they get a bit tatty. So as I say, my proper battery is going to be back, um, yeah, probably in the next few days, and it's going to have the Adapto BMS built into it as well. So I'll be able to show you, you know, how that works. The Adapto BMS is supposed to be really, really good because you can see all the cell voltages on the actual screen. You can initiate balancing from there. And it also protects the battery because if one cell dips down too low, it will tell you on the screen whilst you're discharging, which a normal BMS, you know, may just normally just cut out and you don't know what's going on or, or maybe something even worse happens. Also, you can fast charge through here as well. This is the um, fast charge port that I've got in here, um, which allows you to run. I think I've showed this before. I'm not sure why it's up here by the window. I've just probably just tucked it up there for, for the time being. But this is like a server power supply. So you can see a bit clearer there. But this is like a two, over a two kilowatt. Um, charger so it allows you to charge the bike at actually it allows you to charge this e-bike as, as fast as the twizzy charges like you know directly from its own power supply it's got built in so that's pretty cool anyway guys that's it for this one sorry it wasn't a more kind of exciting e-bike one but this is showing you the genuine problems you have um, with e-bikes and you know how to sort of overcome them even though i haven't actually shown how to fix this yet but we'll, we'll see what happens i'll let you know how it goes but um, i'll catch you in the next video guys